talk about, I mean, the, the Yazidi case, uh, as uh, Robert uh, Jenrick quite rightly said, the immig former immigration minister was an absolute farce. Uh, applied mm -hmm. three times, twice was rejected, uh, then committed two sex crimes, actually. Uh, was given a suspended sentence, then applied again, uh, adding the caveat that he converted to Christianity and he was allowed to stay. Absolute farce. But we learned over yeah. the weekend, and this is what I'd like to talk to you about, uh, that uh, the former Home Secretary, Swella Bravman, is accusing the Church of England and other churches, to be fair, uh, of facilitating uh, asylum applications with Christianity conversions, uh, to use her term, on an industrial scale. Uh, we've got to do something about this. We've just learnt that 40 of the people on the Bibby Stockholm barge are busy converting to Christianity, not because they've seen the light or something, uh, but because it's obviously a good tool uh, in their bid to be able to remain in this country. So we've got to do something about this, haven't we? We have, yes. And I think, you know, when it comes to the Church of England, there's got to be a conversation, if there hasn't already been, uh, with the uh, with Lambeth Palace to discuss this. The Church of England has issued guidance to all of its clergy around the country as to how to manage uh, the support to asylum seekers. So there's, you know, they, they just have to follow the guidelines, and uh, and and you know that's it. You know, the the church would argue, of course, that their their job is not to stop people converting to Christianity. If anything, the opposite. And I have some sympathy for that, but of course we know that there is, from the statements that various members of the clergy have, have issued in the past and things that they've said, um, including the Archbishop in the House of Lords, that ideologically um, they are, or theologically even, they are, as a, as a sort of collective, if you like, they are uh, supportive of humans regardless of where they come from or what their situation is so we've got a fundamental problem there and there needs to be discussion between the home office and, and the church of england lambeth palace on that and and other religious leaders as well but i think there's another element to this too um because the church of england is also correct in saying it's up to the home office to vet people who are claiming for asylum and that's of course true um the the home office uh, has got a problem in this case because since, well, since for the year between, up till March last year, so to March 2022 to March 2023, the latest figures that I've got, we didn't return one person to Afghanistan, to Iran, um, or to Syria, or to Sudan. So no matter what the case put forward by an asylum seeker, uh, the likelihood is that they're not going to be removed in any case. So what do we do then? Well, you know, you've heard me talk about this before, Kevin. There is, we, we, we should be stopping these people coming in anyway, and we should provide the same sort of legal and, and physical facility on our maritime borders as we provide on our air borders. Of course, most people will know that when they land at an airport in the UK, they're not deemed to have entered the UK until they've transited immigration controls. Legally and physically, we don't have those facilities on our maritime borders or on our maritime sort of ports, if you like. So we need to address that. We need to detain them um, until we've ascertained their identity. If they are from uh, those countries that we have no agreement to return them to, then we should be detaining them. There is no way. Henry, no Henry, Henry, do you agree with the former Home Secretary Priti Patel uh, that uh, the church leaders who take part in this mass facilitation of Christianity conversions to help asylum uh, applications, do you agree with Priti Patel that these people, uh, bearing in mind the way uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, behaves in the House of Lords, do you agree mm -hmm. that they are politically motivated? I, uh, some will be. I think it, the way that the church operates in this case is that they're not compelled, no member of the clergy is compelled to give evidence or to support a claim um, or th that somebody is converted to Christianity or, or do anything of that sort. It is up to the individual sort of member of the clergy to do that. Um, so are individuals 
politically motivated? I'm quite certain they are. Are some more sort of naive, if you like, and yeah. taking a sort of ideological, sort of theological position on it? Um, I'm sure some are. So I think there's a, ver a vari variation here. What really comes down, what, where the problem lies in that respect, is the guidance given to the clergy by the Church of England, by Lambeth Palace. And that needs to be addressed. Now, I've not had those conversations with Lambeth Palace, and I don't know whether there are any such conversations going on between the Home Office and the clergy. But um, it is really something that we... Look, at the moment, I've converted to Christianity. You can't remove me. I'm gay. You can't remove me. I've committed rape. You can't remove me. Yeah, that's, um, that you know, was one element, Henry, we've got to talk about. It seems now, you know, conversion to Christianity is one tenet mm -hmm. of your application that seems to work Indeed. quite well. I've converted. But what's really worrying me now, we've got a new tenet to applications. I've committed a sex crime. And therefore, Indeed. if you return me to Somalia, they take a dim view of sex criminals, sex offenders, and I will be persecuted. Well, uh, I thought we took a dim view of them here. Surely if you commit a sex crime, uh, you get deported. It isn't... It should not be a reason to stay. We, we need to, to sort of <laughs> start at a different position, I think, if we're going to solve this, and that is to say, if you've claimed asylum and you commit an offence, an arrestable offence in the United Kingdom, then you immediately are removed yep. from the United Kingdom, or if that's not possible because there's no agreement or we can't sort of fly an aircraft into, into Kabul or whatever, um, then you are detained, and you are detained not in a normal prison, but in an immigration detention facility permanently until such time as you can be removed. You forfeit all right to asylum claim. Now, that needs to be something that these people are required to sign. You know, it's read to them in their language. They, they've got to sign it. Um, you know, that's not bulletproof. There will be claims, of course, but then we need leadership and we need we need determination from the government to impose this, to enforce it. So, you know, we're starting in the wrong place. The place is not to say, what do we do with them, you know, sort of if they do this or if they do that. The, the start point is the moment we have first contact with these people. And that's where we need to assess whether or not we detain them or whether we don't and what sort of legal... Uh, constraints we place upon them. At the moment, none of that's in place. We just bring them into the interior of the country, we process them, um, we give them accommodation, and, uh, yeah, hey, you know, there is no system. There is no... The, the, the attitude of the Home Office and of the church and everybody else seems to be that we are putting... We are prioritising the welfare and the interests and the wishes of the individual asylum seeker before ensuring the well, safety and security of the people Henry, of the United Kingdom. Henry, I think we are. Uh, one thing that struck me this weekend is reading all the various newspaper write-ups of this, there seem to be a lot of publications which have sources who are related to this asylum seeker, related to a Zaidi, who also happened to be in this country <laughs> as asylum seekers. There was at least two. One was a, a, an interview with his brother, and the other was an interview with some other family member. We also know that he is somehow connected to the victim. I don't know anything about her that hasn't been released where she might, from where she might hail. But it seems to me as well from other stories that they send families, send one person across, one young man across, and then as soon as he gets into the country, everyone else tries to follow suit. Is that the case? If you're an asylum seeker, you can then essentially uh, make claim for all of your relatives to join you. Uh, well, to, to a large degree, Alex, yes. And I, I'd spotted that as well. Um, there was a, an unnamed member of his family here who was sort of saying this is surprising behaviour. They, and they, they were asking him to sort of hand himself in. I, and I noticed, well, you know, so he's got family here. He's, how extended is that? But the answer, Alex, is yes. I mean, if you if you are granted the right to remain in the UK, then you can bring other people in on family reunification basis. Um, so the, there is no restraint here. There's no deterrent. If you are Afghan, Iranian, Sudanese or Syrian, you know that you're not going to be returned anyway, even mm. if your asylum claim is turned down. So you then get the right to remain and then you can bring family members over as well. Yes. Um, you know, the, there is no... There is no break to this. There is no deterrent. And sending one in 80 people, if it ever works, to Rwanda, and I suspect that... I actually suspect that the, the, the Prime Minister will win his bet because I think before the general election, he will make damn sure that there's about half a dozen people who do get on a flight to Rwanda, even if they've been paid and bribed effectively to go or they've volunteered in some way. So... Um, but there, there's still, even 
under his best case scenario, one in 80 will go, that's no deterrent. We are providing no deterrent. Mm. We're not dealing with these people when they get here. They commit an offence and, and there's still nothing and happening. They get to allowed them. to stay. You couldn't make it up. Look, Henry, we all know fantastic this is... to talk to you. Thank you so much.